We say bye-bye, Bill, and turn our attention to a developing system in the Southern Gulf. Invest 92L could be the first storm of the season to hit us here in the United States. We're live with the latest and to answer your questions here on Tracking the Tropics. Hey there, folks. JB Buno here with you live once again in your hurricane headquarters being joined here by a team of meteorologists to break down Invest 92L, the remnants of Bill, the tropical wave that you see there to our east. A lot to get to here on this edition of Tracking the Tropics. So glad to have meteorologists Rebecca Barry and Hank Allen from WGNO in New Orleans joining us there on the right side of your screen. If you haven't been with us here before, a quick explanation of how this works. We're going to start looking right now in the Facebook Live comment section for your questions, hashtag hey Rebecca, hashtag hey Hank, hashtag hey JB, or hashtag hey Amanda for meteorologist Amanda Holly standing by with the very latest here. Amanda, a lot of attention now turning from Bill to Invest 92L. Yeah, you know, I stepped away for just a couple of days on my normal weekend here in the tropics, the Atlantic here. It kind of lit up over the past couple of days. If you've been away, yep, we already had our second named storm of the season. That was Tropical Storm Bill. It's already uh, a remnant of Bill. We're not even looking at a tropical system anymore with that. The National Hurricane Center was watching a tropical wave that had come off the coast of Africa, gave it a low chance of development, but now they have uh, gotten rid of that chance as well. So the sole thing we're looking at at this point is Invest 90. And we've been talking about this for the past couple of days. We uh, briefly mentioned it last week that we were maybe going to be looking in this general area for possible tropical development. Well, here we are one week later. And yes, we have a high chance of something developing over the next couple of days and an even higher. For the past about five days or so, it's finally developed an area of low pressure, um, and it's going to start to meander off to the north, but not really until tomorrow, and that's when we're expecting more development. Otherwise, it's going to stay uh, basically the same over the next 24 hours. Tomorrow night, maybe into Friday, we'll be talking about a tropical depression and then potentially our next named storm. But this is not unusual this time of year. Uh, this is where we look. This is exactly where we look for tropical development in the Gulf of Mexico. Bay of Campeche, uh, the western portion of the Caribbean Sea, and exactly where Bill formed just off the east coast of the United States. And when these systems develop in these areas, they tend to take a track off to the north here in the western Gulf. And if they develop in the uh, western Caribbean Sea here again off to the north, potentially a track maybe closer to Florida here and then up into uh, the Atlantic. But this is what we're looking at. If we see something develop right here over the next 24 to 48 hours, it will take a path to the the north and impact potentially along the northern Gulf Coast. But again, also an area where we typically look at in June is just off the east coast of the United States, and that's what happened with Bill. It was a very short-lived storm, formed very quickly, and it was uh, didn't live very long, but this was the path it kind of took. Again, it is remnants of Bill. We're not looking at a tropical system there anymore, so good news there. It's no longer a threat to anyone, not that it was ever a threat to the United States, but second name storm in the books. Now we're looking at potentially a, a tropical depression, maybe the third named storm of the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. And that's what it looks like right now. Just an area of low pressure. We've got some showers, some thunderstorms impacting the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, some storms bubbling up in the southern Gulf of Mexico, but it's got a good chance of organizing here. Of course, the water temperatures are very warm. And remember, the path that I, typic that I said that these storms typically tend to take are off to the north, and it could be impacting somewhere along the northern Gulf Coast states, which is exactly where our featured meteorologist joins us from today, uh, Chief Meteorologist Hank Allen there from WGNO. And I want to bring Hank in because, Hank, I know you're watching this closely. You guys were impacted a lot last year, uh, but, you know, can you tell me a little bit about what you're expecting right now with this system? Yeah, Amanda, first off, nice to be back with you this season. We were hoping it uh, wouldn't be as early in the season this year after so much time with you guys last year. But, uh, yeah, you know, we're watching this uh, obviously very closely as we go through the next few days. Uh, you know, for all the uncertainty out there with this system because it hasn't developed yet, we'll wait to see what it does develop. It's interesting that a lot of the forecast models have actually been putting this on the map for us here 
really over the past four or five days, and they've actually been in relatively good agreement. We talk about those uh, sort of global models, the GFS and the European that a lot of people hear about. And actually, uh, this past weekend, late last week, last Friday, I was over at a friend's house. I was just sort of joking about uh, having a tropical storm in the area next weekend. And people were like, wow, really? I was like, well, you know, most likely not because we're eight to nine days out here and, and how much can change in that time frame. But it really hasn't. I mean, these things have been really persistent in bringing that load that you're talking about on that track, uh, sort of a western Louisiana landfall uh, where those spaghetti models are showing it for the most part. And that's going to put the heaviest rain probably over our area. So that's really our main impact that we're looking at right now. Uh, barring any sort of major development, which I don't think is going to happen at this point. We'll obviously watch that. But, uh, you know, these, as you know, these uh, sort of broad disorganized systems, the heaviest rain oftentimes well east of the center. Uh, a lot of agreement right now that the models are showing that actually over southeast Louisiana and southern Mississippi. And that's sort of the impact that I've been hitting over the past couple of days here is we could be looking at five to 10 inches of rain, at least in parts of our area which of course heading into the weekend, uh, you worry about that risk of some flooding. So that's going to be the main threat it looks like at the moment. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to talk about next. The main threat here, luckily, you know, we say unfortunately that it is this early in the season and we're talking about potential U.S. impacts from a tropical system, but because it is so early, uh, we won't likely be seeing a very strong system if this develops at all. We're going to be looking at the main impacts with the moisture. There's a lot of tropical moisture uh, around it right now, but you can see this orange here. This is dry air kind of being sucked into where it's trying to develop. So that's going to hinder it a little bit, this, its development over the next couple of days. But regardless, there's still going to going to be plenty of moisture for uh, it to dump quite a bit of rainfall along the northern Gulf Coast. But as Hank just mentioned, it's still early. We don't have a system developed yet. So it's kind of hard to talk about exact impact, exact exactly how much rainfall we could see. But this area of tropical moisture moving north in the Gulf of Mexico and then being taken across the southeast states over the next couple of days, over the next five days or so, that is likely. So we're looking at some heavy rainfall, maybe some breezy winds here and there. And also, also, with any landfalling tropical system, we also have a very low end threat for uh, water spouts moving ashore and quick spin up tornadoes. But the main hazard with this system really going to be the rainfall. And this is kind of what we're looking at the rainfall accumulation totals here. Uh, maybe anywhere between, like Hank said, five and 10 inches of rain in localized spots. It's just going to be hard to tell exactly where it's going to fall. We do think that it's, it's going to be on the right side of the storm from where it comes ashore, which again will, uh, will be be better determined over the next couple of days as the system gets a little bit better organized. But rainfall a threat. Um, and we'll also be talking about the Saharan dust. You've probably seen articles floating around on the internet about it. Uh, we have had a plume kind of move into the Caribbean Sea. And this is also going to help to keep it a little bit weaker because some of this dust you can see, it gets wrapped around in the center of the storm. And uh, it's actually going to uh, give us here in the state of Florida a little bit nicer of some sunsets. And it's actually going to give us a little bit of some drier weather. But the Saharan dust will help to keep this system just a little bit weaker uh, as this system kind of moves off to the north. So, of course, we're going to be watching this as it develops over the next 24 hours. Could it potentially be our next name storm? Yes, it is likely going to develop into at least a tropical depression, maybe a low to mid-grade tropical storm here. We've got plenty warm waters. The sea surface temperatures well in that range, but they're not as hot as they would be if we were talking about this in August and September. So there's probably plenty of questions coming in about you know, rapid development or anything like that, rapid intensification. Um, but right now, tracking the tropics will begin momentarily. Water temperatures, sorry about that, folks. Water temperatures are uh, plenty warm enough for at least some tropical development. But when we look at Max Defender 8 radar, our local radar here in the Tampa Bay area, we'll be using this to track any rain, any storms that do come into the Tampa Bay area as we head farther and farther into tropical season. The past few days, we've actually had plenty of tropical moisture being swept over the state. We've got a lot of rainfall the past couple of days here in Tampa. We're still tracking it right now. This is uh, over the past 30 minutes. We've got some heavy rain moving through downtown and in through portions of northern Polk County. And this is kind of some tropical moisture streaming in uh, from the Gulf of Mexico. Similar setup again as we as we head into the next couple of days could be our next name system. A lot of tropical moisture going to be moving into the northern Gulf Coast states. And guys, I'll say our next name storm on the list is Claudette. So we'll be watching for that to potentially develop over the next couple of days.
Meteorologist Amanda Holly here with the very latest here for us, folks. As a reminder, if you're just joining us here on Tracking the Tropics, we're going to start to now take your questions there in the Meteorologist Q&A that we've now activated. If you're on Facebook Live, hello there to you. Live with you in your hurricane headquarters this June 16th. A lot of ways to go here in the 2021 hurricane season. You see the hashtags underneath all of our names here. Hashtag Hey Rebecca, hashtag Hey Hank, hashtag Hey JB, hashtag Hey Amanda. We'll start now to look for the questions and comments with those hashtags so that we can feature some of your great questions and comments on screen. Before, while we start to look for them here, and I see that a bunch have already come in, we're going to let's check in with meteorologist Rebecca Barry. Hey there, Rebecca. What stuck out to you most notably here about uh, the storms that we have uh, here, but with the remnants of Bill, Invest 92L, this tropical wave here as well. Well, it was just how textbook it is. Just like Amanda was talking about the areas that we watch for development um, this time of the year, that's exactly where they're developing. Aside from that storm, that's that tropical wave that's rolling off the coastline of Africa, it's still a little too early for those types of formations. And so I was excited to see the Saharan dust. It's not nearly at the levels it was a couple of years ago. It's at typical levels for this time of the year, especially in the areas that it's at. But when we do get those prettier sunsets, I love to see those and also how weak it tends to keep systems. That drier air just really hinders development. The storms that we see that do form this time of the year, based on the locations that we see them forming in, they do tend to be on the weaker side. So that's the other promising aspect of it. They tend to be rainmakers, not wind or storm surge storms. And we are going to start now taking your questions here on the Facebook Live. Everyone loves talking about Saharan dust, as Rebecca was just <laughs> noting here. It's always a topic of conversation here on Track in the Tropics. Our first question comes in for Chief Meteorologist Hank Allen joining us from WGNO in New Orleans. Hashtag Hey Hank from Kate Walker here from our Facebook page here in Tampa uh, asking, uh, what does Invest 92L mean? And uh, the short answer is that it just doesn't mean that it's not Claudette yet. Right, Hank? Yeah, right. Live from our hurricane head short for uh, investigation, basically. And these terms are something that have popped up more recently in the past few years as uh, TV meteorologists have sort of started to share that, you know, it was sort of inside baseball commentary before that uh, people started putting on social media and of course the internet everybody's able to look up this stuff on their own and that sort of thing but an invest is exactly what it sounds like they're investigating the system they're starting to run some of the tropical forecast models off the system even though there's no actual center point yet so we don't have that if we did it'd be a depression or maybe a named storm but uh, it is a system that they're putting the models out on and they're starting to focus on a little more closely the l stands for atlantic uh, and then if you had a uh, p you'd have the uh, EP, you'd have the uh, uh, Pacific storms, of course. So uh, that's basically what it is. We're investigating this system. We're watching it develop. They're starting to run some of the tropical models on it, but we don't have that close center of circulation yet that would indicate either a depression or some sort of named storm. We have a lot of questions coming in here. Let's get to the next one here from Rihanna Rain. Hashtag, hey, Amanda, since we're some still some days away out and one model shows this storm coming, more towards Florida, is there a chance it could impact us here in the Tampa area? And I was going to mention this. Is, Rihanna is right on point here because I was going to ask this question here specifically. One of the spaghetti models here, Amanda, showing that, yeah, it could make our way east. So, yeah, I was, I was talking to uh, meteorologist Ian Oliver and Lee Spann earlier about this and how we don't have as many lines on here as we typically do. And I'm not exactly sure why, to be 100% honest with you, but that... Spe specific spaghetti line is not uh, really a, a very great possibility. Um, we Most of the models, as Hank was talking about earlier, have been very consistent um, in bringing this through the western Gulf up north and potentially impacting somewhere along the northern Gulf Coast states. Earlier on, several days ago, maybe a couple of them brought, the, brought it a little bit closer to the Florida Panhandle, uh, but not a, a single model run that I have seen. Um, maybe Rebecca or Hank could... Um, allude to this at all, but um, none of them that I have seen have brought it to the Tampa Bay area. So you have to remember that the forecast models are just a spread of a bunch of different runs. They, they put different um, ingredients basically into them, and um, some of them are, are lower confidence. Some of them are less reliable as well. Re Rebecca, we're going to always get a lot of questions here uh, about Florida because in Hank's uh, region uh, of the country, they got hammered. <laughs> he doesn't need a <laughs> reminder of uh, or, or PTSD from what was the 2020 hurricane season. Uh, but people here in Florida are smart enough to realize that it's been some time since we were hit with something. So uh, I think, uh, Hank, I'm going to speak for your Louisiana viewers out there in New Orleans and saying uh, you guys are just saying east, 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 go east. 
Uh, but that would be ideal, certainly, as you head into uh, Father's Day weekend here. And I had somebody come up and ask me about a wedding that they had planned for Saturday night. You know, so that's the other thing here locally is, uh, you know, we had a year of basically no events. And, of course, the New Orleans area, a huge wedding area. I mean, you've got so many of these events that because of the pandemic over the past year have been postponed. Everything's now opening back up. So people are really scheduling a lot of stuff here heading into May and June, you know, trying to get things done before the peak of the season, which of course is August and September. And so now you're just like, man, is this really happening already? I mean, you've got Father's Day weekend here. And I think a lot of people are just like, this is unbelievable. Everybody knows that the forecast is for another busy season, but uh, you know, you were hoping to get through at least June without having to deal with too much of this. And, you know, I'll speak to that one forecast model real quick. You know, there is a front coming in at some point. So I think probably that one line may be indicating that that system just sort of hangs out there for a very long time. And then the front sort of moves it off to the east. Uh, like Amanda said, though, that's probably not very likely. And, and I'm with Amanda. I've been looking at this map for the past few days. It's like, where are all the lines? So we're missing some of these tropical models that we normally have. But Just luckily, talk to our the graphic systems about this. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Luckily, the global ones are in pretty good agreement. Yes. And if you've got that moisture uh, map, that was a good map that you showed here. I really think this is one of those systems that's relatively disorganized going towards the coast because of the factors Amanda mentioned. And then as that front moves in, it sort of interacts with that and maybe looks a little more impressive inland. So you know, when you roll that forward, you can see that it actually has more circulation probably in central Mississippi and Alabama. Once it picks up right there, it interacts with that front. And I think it's one of those situations where you see the radar look a lot more impressive probably inland uh, than it does when it's making landfalls. So that's why that heavy rain threat is really going to be with us for several states. And that's uh, that's also the good news. I mean, at least it's not sitting in one place, you know, just dumping rain like a Allison or something back in the day for several days. So at least it moves out quick thanks to that front, but also keeps it probably a little stronger, a little farther inland. Yeah. And, you know, we were just joking about, you know, pushing this storm to the east. Uh, you know, there are some folks out there who really want this to uh, to head east. Uh, Judy Fishaw here, hashtag AJB. Will we get some rain from this on the west coast of Florida? Uh, Rebecca, there are folks out there who uh, who would like to see some precipitation head our way. Some some even if it's in the form of, uh, of a storm or rain without a name, as they say. And so we have been pretty dry, not um, historically dry, but we have been pretty dry. We're catching up with these downpours that you're seeing on Max Defender 8 right now. And so unfortunately, it looks like the the system is actually going to dry us out a little for the weekend because it's so far away from the coastline of Florida. It's dragging some of that Saharan dust and dry air that's to the east of us right now across the state and drawing the moisture all closer to the center of the Gulf and the Western Gulf. And so it's actually lowering our rain chances in Florida here over the weekend. But as it does push to the north of us, like you were seeing on that moisture forecast, uh, starting on Monday especially, we'll see that enhanced rainfall it just as kind of a side effect of it being so close to us as it passes to the north of us, we see the moisture returning back to our forecast. So we'll get back to the rain, but it is going to have the opposite effect on us here in Tampa there for a day or two. Yeah, we want the rain on those days that, uh, that aren't Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? We go and we're outside and enjoying our more wonderful, uh, our wonderful climate here in the Tampa Bay area. A reminder here that we're live to a lot of different Facebook pages, and we really want to hear from our folks on the northern Gulf Coast. Uh, basically, at this stage and where we are, and looking at the models, uh, the northern Gulf Coast is what we're uh, what we're what we're tracking here as far as Tropical Invest ninety two. L here. So folks uh, in, in Texas, folks in uh, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, those Gulf Coast areas, uh, comment at us with your questions while we're here live on Track in the Tropics. Again, you can use any of the hashtags that we have, such as hashtag Hey Hank from Bobby Curtis Sheehorn here, hashtag Hey Hank. Uh, is that system going to affect West Monroe, Louisiana, and how much rain and wind? I tell you what, the northern part of the state uh, probably doesn't see a whole lot from this. It looks like it does start to turn to the northeast right after it makes landfall. So you'll probably end up with more impacts central, east central Mississippi, central Alabama. That's a great example of it right there. I mean, there's that rainfall accumulation forecast. Now, obviously, this is a model and things could shift farther off to the west, but they've been pretty persistent in showing this look right here. And you can see as you get up to around Monroe and, and Ruston on the map there over towards Shreveport, I mean, there's not going to be a whole lot of rain out of this. Uh, maybe a day of some breezy northerly winds coming in actually should feel pretty pleasant on the backside of this system here by the time you get into Saturday afternoon. And uh, northern parts of the state up along I-20, I don't see a whole lot until you start getting farther into 
southeastern Mississippi, central Alabama there. Uh, you can see the potential for some locally heavy rain all the way up to Birmingham with this. We may be dealing with some uh, rainfall flooding up there. Keep in mind, parts of both of those states, Mississippi and Alabama, have already seen a lot of rain over the past few weeks here. And so flooding certainly could be an issue in those areas uh, with additional heavy rain through the weekend. But northern Louisiana, not so much. Got some more questions coming in here, and, and, and but as, as we load them in here into our system, Rebecca, as we're watching here, there's a, uh, a lot of folks joining us here again from Florida here. What, um, what are the ch- – let let, let's backtrack for a second. Before we talk about Florida, let's talk about what are the chances this becomes Claudette in, in your estimation because once it becomes a name storm, of course, uh, a lot more eyeballs get uh, – get, uh, Attention goes in that direction. We can unofficially start referring to it as Claudette. I think the National Hurricane Center has been watching it for several days now. All the forecast models that we rely on pretty heavily are in general agreement that it's going to organize. Now, the Euro was keeping it a little more concise and a little bit potentially more intense than the GFS was. And so that just had a lot to do with rainfall distribution. The weaker storms tend to be very lopsided, and that becomes problematic for rainfall because the rain's not evenly distributed around around that center of rotation. And so parts of your area get heavy, heavy, heavy rainfall. And a lot of times it, the, the forward motion stalls out quite a bit as it moves on shore sometimes with those heavier areas of rainfall. And that's when you get those hot spots that get so much rain in such a short amount of time and you get the flooding problems as a result of rainfall. Whereas stronger storms, you get that more evenly distributed rainfall and it moves faster. You have to worry more about tornadoes within those rain bands, but you don't necessarily have to worry about flooding from rainfall with the stronger storm. So that's why we're talking about this one so much in terms of being a rainmaker, because it does look like it's going to be one of those weaker, more lopsided systems with the unfair and unequal amounts of rainfall, you know, just a couple of miles away. J.B. Buno, Hank Allen, Rebecca Barry, Amanda Holly here with you live on Tracking the Tropics. It's going to be a last call for your questions and comments. Hey guys, we got three terrific, very experienced meteorologists here with you live for the next few minutes to answer your questions. So ask them again with the hashtags that we have all around the screen here underneath our names. Hashtag hey Rebecca, Amanda, a- 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 Hank, and, and JB. Uh, we'll be looking for them uh, here in the Facebook Live comment section. I want to bring up our two meteorologists from right here in the Tampa Bay area for this next question. Uh, this one coming from David Fassel here and uh, hashtag AJB. Hey, will this storm clean up red tide in our area and amanda perhaps we could start this off by explaining to uh, some of our viewers that are maybe joining us from outside of the tampa bay area uh, who've never heard of red tide what exactly red tide is well, red tide is basically just an har- a harmful algal bloom in the Gulf of Mexico. Usually it kind of picks up off of our coastline. It starts to develop offshore, um, and then it kind of feeds off of the nutrients that are in the water. And if we have higher levels of nutrients, the bloom can spread a little bit quicker. Um, it can become a little more dense and then drift inland, and that's when it affects our beaches and our bays. Um, and, it, of course, it kills fish, and, um, and it creates a very unpleasant odor in the air as well that can actually uh, impact our health uh, as well it causes respiratory issues and people that are affect uh, people that are affected by it so will this clean up red tide i think that's going to be too far in the western Gulf of Mexico to really have an impact with this. If it was a little bit closer, maybe a little bit stronger of a storm, we could actually see um, the churning of the water break up the red tide a little bit more. Um, But on the other hand, the other caveat to that is if we got too much rainfall, uh, the fresh water can can provide more nutrients for that red tide to to grow. So it's kind of a a balance. We we prefer the churning of the water to kind of mix it out. Right, Rebecca? Oh, yeah, that Um, would be nice. (laughs) But but I think it's going to be a little too far in the western Gulf. I was very hopeful because I was looking at some forecast models yesterday. It looked like we may briefly develop a northeasterly flow, which Mm -hmm. would push it a little bit away from our our coastline. Coastline. But that's probably wishful thinking based on the forecast models models but there, there's a window of hope for some a northeasterly really flow briefly there we got some viewers joining us from Lou uh, actually no this is from WRBL's Facebook page in Georgia how about uh, hashtag hey Amanda we're gonna throw these over to Hank uh, hashtag hey Amanda when is it going to hit Georgia and then also here uh, Cody Ritchie hashtag AJB will it rain a lot in East Alabama on Saturday so folks asking about uh, East Alabama Hank this weekend and then also asking about uh, whether or not Georgia could see any impacts. 
But yeah, I think you will see some, and, and you guys have been showing that uh, rainfall forecast map. It's a great map that shows basically what a lot of the models are in agreement with right there. It's a fairly fast mover. That's the good news. We mentioned that front coming in from the north, so it sort of gets sucked up and tied in with that and gets on the move to the northeast. But that's also going to be very heavy rain, and I think you're looking at uh, potentially a lot more rain in south central Alabama than you are maybe in south central Louisiana, closer to the center, because uh, as Rebecca was just saying, it's, uh, you know, these, these lopsided systems produce heavy rain so far off to the east that we could easily see more rain coming into southeastern and south central Alabama and into western Georgia than into central Louisiana. So if you're east of the center here over the next few days, as this thing gets on the move, you got to be prepared for some of that locally heavy rainfall. You see the time frame there going into Sunday evening uh, in central Alabama, maybe not so much southeastern, but certainly central Alabama, seeing some very heavy rainfall with this on up into north Georgia as well. And, you know, we also know these systems tend to draw up at least one feeder band from them for a day or two. This is picking up on the rain near the center, or at least northeast of the center, that big batch that's going to be moving in. But a lot of times these have at least one band that just sort of sets up and keeps drawing moisture off the Gulf of Mexico. So if you get stuck under that, you could also get a few inches of rain until that center moves east of you. So, you know, if you drew a line from New Orleans up to Jackson, Mississippi, and east of that, you're probably uh, under the gun here for some locally heavy rain through the weekend, especially north of, you know, north of I-10 over there in Alabama, maybe up the... Uh, what would that be? I-65 corridor as you get farther up to the north, I-85 as well into Georgia. So, uh, you know, those areas, southeastern Mississippi, too, I think you got to watch out for some of that heavy rain. Uh, also right there in, in that neck of the woods, shout out to WMBB's Facebook page, Brandon and Allison joining us from there. That's Panama City Beach and hashtag hey Amanda, some thoughts here on Panama City Beach and some of the impacts that they could feel from 92L. Yeah, always uh, Panama City Beach there, kind of still on high alert from several years ago when Hurricane Michael uh, moved to shore. Luckily, this is not going to be anything like that. I did mention earlier that several days ago, one or two of the model runs that we look at uh, kind of had the storm moving ashore a little bit farther to the east, closer to the Florida Panhandle, but those have since all pushed back, and the, most of the models, the reliable models that we look at now, continue to be very consistent with uh, the system moving ashore somewhere along the northern central Gulf Coast there. But as you can see, I kind of zoomed in on the, the radar map or the excuse me, the rainfall total map. And you guys could be looking at some heavy rainfall moving in, especially if the center comes ashore a little bit farther off to the east. Um, you could be looking at some heavy rain. You are going to have an onshore wind. So that's going to provide a little bit of some push of that water. Not expecting a big storm surge with this at, by any means, especially in, in Panama City. Um, and then, of course, because you'll be on the right side of the storm, we'll be watching for the chance for water spouts moving ashore. And and uh, potentially in some of those stronger feeder bands like Hank was just talking about. We typically see those areas of rotation form in the stronger feeder bands. So you'll have to watch for water spouts developing offshore, moving onshore. And then um, quick spin-ups of tornadoes are not out of the question either. But in overall, Panama City, very, very low impact event. We're just looking at some heavy rain and the very low potential for an isolated tornado or water spout. Got my eyes here, everybody, across multiple screens on the final three questions that we are going to be. Uh, taking here uh, this next one we're gonna I'll let any meteorologist hop in here and answer this next one because it comes from Michael Henderson here from WFLA hashtag hey Amanda can you speak in generalities about the extreme rain we have here and the dryness on the west coast are they inversely uh, related in some way so to any of our three wonderful meteorologists Rebecca Amanda and Hank who would like to hop in here and uh, and take that question from Michael so we've definitely had a, a, a lot of rain just within the past couple of days here along the west coast of Florida, which has been very beneficial because we have needed the rain. Before this couple of rounds, just in the past couple of days, we've been very dry. We haven't seen a whole lot of rain. We um, saw rainy season turn on for a couple of days there, got some good downpours here and there, but really hasn't exacerbated um, the drought too much. Um, Technically, though, we're not in, in a drought, so that's good. It might seem dry. Your lawn might seem really dry, uh, but according to the U.S. Drought Monitor, we're not in an official drought. Some areas still considered abnormally dry, but um, the heavy rain that we're seeing right now, hopefully you've gotten in on some of that. <laughs> hopefully your lawn has soaked up some of that rain. We'll continue to see this rain that you're seeing on Max Defender 8 radar right now um, stream through over the next 12 hours or so. But then, as Rebecca talked about earlier, our rain chances is actually going to come down as we head into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. 
It does look like uh, Max Defender 8 is picking up on some pretty heavy rain right mm -hmm. now. And it, whenever I see that, I get excited because I know that all the lawns are getting a little happier out there. Yeah. <laughs> but then I get caught in it and I'm like, hmm, you know. It's bad to get caught in the rain. Yeah. Just, it's much more fun <laughs> it's to nice just to watch, watch it, it on the radar. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take this uh, one here from, 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 oh, Hank, Hank, you want to hop in there? Oh, well, I was just going to say it has been a weird season. You know, March through May, we had our fourth wettest uh, spring ever for those three months here in the New Orleans area. And, you know, typically that's more uh, indicative of an El Nino type season when you get a lot of stormy patterns in the south and wet patterns in the south. And this hurricane season, we're talking about not being an El Nino. So that's going to make it active. I don't know. I just found it kind of weird that. You know, we had such an active spring season across much of the deep south, a lot of heavy rain. We've still gotten some heavy rain over the past week or so. Uh, I mean, it's almost more like an El Nino pattern to me, but it's, uh, you know, it's not forecast to be out there. All right, let's get to this comment here from Carol from WFLA here, uh, our Facebook page. Hashtag hey, Amanda. Well, uh, well, maybe I should stop procrast maybe I should stop procrastinating and get some batteries, flashlights, water in this house. Will this be a wind event? I always lose I think that was power. I always lose power, and I know uh, Rebecca, you're. Uh, we're gonna have an episode coming up here on Track in the Tropics here soon about some of the lesser known hurricane hacks things that you really want to know and do now before that storm arrives. Yeah, we're compiling a list of things that maybe you don't see on your normal traditional hurricane list that you should probably go ahead and at least consider adding to your hurricane kit. We've got some tips and tricks. We're all kind of hurricane experts after the last couple of seasons, but this is next level good stuff and we've got it from some of you guys have been helping and say, hey, I do this, neat tips and tricks like that. So that's coming to a Talking to the Tropics near you soon. Yeah, I'm looking forward to to learning more. I, I'm Definitely always... get those batteries, though, to yes. answer that question. Absolutely. Get them now. Prepare now. Because, no, we're not going to see uh, too many direct impacts from this system here in the Tampa Bay area. But we um, are, you know, could potentially be impacted in the near future. So you just want to be prepared. This next comment is a reminder that everyone watches us here on Tracking the Tropics, including family, friends, and uh is this, is this nieces, nephews? Nephews. The, nephews, both. both yes, hey, <laughs> duh, Hank and Dex here. Uh, hey, you got a good name. Yeah. yeah Hank. <laughs> uh, it's Susan browning Weaveman. hashtag hey Amanda, Hank and Dex say hello. And they're wondering about all those colors on the screen. Amanda. There's a lot of colors, I know. And all of our different maps, there's so many different colors. And uh, they all mean something different. This particular one, though, Hank and Dex, if you're watching still, We've got a lot of rain. That's what the reds and the greens and the yellows are. That's rain falling from the sky. So the past couple of days, we've seen that rain fall in, the, in our area here in Sarasota and, and where you guys are at. Um, but right now, we've got a lot of rain falling a little bit of farther away from us, and it could organize into a bigger storm. So that's what we're watching. That's what we're talking about. And it could become a named tropical storm over the next couple of days. Love when we have uh, members of our uh, of our family watching here on Tracking the Tropics. Uh, great to have, of course, WGNO, like family to us here. WGNO Chief Meteorologist Hank Allen. <laughs> Hank, uh, what, what are just uh, some, some parting words here as far as uh, what you're going to be watching in Louisiana over the next 48 uh, to 72 hours? Yeah, you know, what I've been saying really is that uh, as we've talked about, indications are this does not intensify tremendously so i don't think even if it is an aim storm i don't see it intensifying enough to sort of ramp up our impacts to that next level so basically i've been telling people to prepare for a lot of rain especially in new orleans eastward uh you know some spots are going to end up with two to four inches some spots could end up with six to eight inches of rainfall here as we head through the friday and saturday time frame we'll see how the, the really the intensity the one thing that's going to probably impact is going to be those wind gusts and so if we get quite a bit of rain with some wind in the 30s and 40s i mean i know it doesn't sound like much but uh, i could walk outside in new orleans and sneeze and somebody's going to lose power so uh, I think, uh, you know, some sporadic power outages, certainly the potential for some isolated flooding uh, with some of this heavy rain. And then, you know, coastal flooding, not really that big of a deal. We had two to four feet a couple weeks ago with a few days of onshore flow just from, you know, summertime wind. So uh, I would expect that some minor flooding outside the levee system that we have here. But definitely the most of this is going to be a rainmaker with that isolated tornado threat, as we mentioned. So you know, we'll be here uh, through the weekend letting folks know what's going on. And, you know, basically it's just sort of a wait and see the next few days just don't anticipate this to develop enough to cause tremendous impacts, but definitely going to bring a lot of heavy rain to parts of the southeast. And, and like I mentioned earlier, parts of the southeast inland that have already been dealing with some flooding over the past couple of weeks. I, I love New Orleans. It's one of my favorite cities in the world where, where Hank gets to work every day. And I will remember not to sneeze over there in New Orleans because <laughs> uh, clearly... 
uh, could be a problem. WGNO Chief Meteorologist Hank Allen joining us there, and uh, we'll be likely seeing some more of Hank here in the in the months ahead. He's got a, a busy job here in the days ahead. So to all of our viewers watching from southern Louisiana, even if you're not from southern Louisiana, give Hank a follow on social media. For folks in New Orleans, check him out on WGNO. He's the chief meteorologist over there, a great, phenomenal weather team that he gets to work with on a daily basis. And to all of our other viewers and to Hank and Dex, if you ever need a science tutor, uh, Amanda Holly, I think, is a pretty, <laughs> a pretty good place to start. That's what we do here, folks, on Track of the Tropics. We teach you about weather. We let you know about the storms that we're tracking here with the meteorologists that you see here on your screen and so many more that you aren't seeing on this episode because we tap into meteorologists across the country and in the, in the southeastern United States especially to bring us the very latest on all of these areas and all of these storms that we are tracking over the course of the hurricane season. We are live Wednesdays, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central, or when a storm forms. So... If we have something imminent with Claudette and Rebecca Barry, of course, uh, seems extremely confident that we're going to have something with Claudette here very, very shortly. Uh, that's something that we're going to be live here for as well on this app, website, or social media platform. For Rebecca Barry, Hank Allen, Amanda Holly, I'm J.B. Bune, and we'll see you next time on Tracking the Tropics. Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics.